Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On March 19th, 2024, Premier Blaine Higgs and the governing Progressive Conservative Party tabled New Brunswick's 2024-2025 provincial budget. Now, according to the province, this budget, quote, is the result of years of responsible fiscal management and a commitment to providing services that support a growing population, end quote. The Finance and Treasury Board Minister Ernie Steves tabled a $1.2 billion capital budget, an increase of nearly $200 million over the multi-year plan tabled last year. Now, we caught up with Andrew Black the president of the Union of the Municipalities of New Brunswick, for his reaction to the provincial budget. Now, as a proponent of advocating for municipal interest, President Black's perspective promises to shed light on the implications of this provincial budget leading up to this year's provincial election scheduled for October. This is Municipal Affairs. President Black, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by getting uh, your first initial reactions to the provincial budget that Minister Steves uh, tabled earlier this week. From a municipality standpoint, uh, what was your initial reaction? Well, um, we're we're here in Fredericton. We just finished up our advocacy days. This is the first uh, advocacy days we've had for our association, uh, UMNB. Um, so we, we arrived on Tuesday, the budget was passed on Tuesday. So we've, we haven't had a chance to really, really dig in, but initial reaction was that it was uh, fairly underwhelming. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I mean, they, there wasn't, I, I was surprised, uh, personally, but from an association standpoint, there wasn't a lot of additional spending. Um, I thought leading into an election year that there may have been, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to make this sound flippant, but some money thrown around, um, you know, just j just on, on on some things that need to change in the province uh, from the provincial government. And that didn't happen. I mean, the, the budget was pretty, uh, you know, steady as she goes. Uh, so uh, underwhelming. One of the things that your organization has been calling for is a new fiscal framework with the province to deal with some of the infrastructure challenges that municipalities are dealing with, particularly in the aftermath of the municipal reforms that were passed last year or, in, or 2023, I should say, January 1st is when the municipal reforms took place. Uh, it didn't seem like, and I've read the speech, I've listened to the speech, it didn't seem like your requests to the minister or the premier were heard. Are you concerned that this is going to be setting municipalities up to struggle over the next few month, years? Yeah, there, there was really nothing in there as far as uh, any of our asks around municipal uh, municipal fiscal framework or, um, you know, fiscal levers for municipalities. Um, I mean, last year was the first year of reform for, for many municipalities in the province. And I think there was a realization at the end of that uh, that with debt, with a download of responsibility, new responsibilities for communities, that it was going to be a struggle. So, twenty three was uh, uh, twenty twenty three was sort of an awakening for many municipalities. The hope was that um, some kind of a fiscal framework or a pathway would have been um, initiated by now, and that hasn't happened. We, I mean, we're still talking with the provincial government on that topic. Um, and we, we hope to have something in place by January 1st, 2025. I would like to see it, you know, before we get into the election season, but certainly in the budget, there was nothing there um, that, that supported municipalities opportunity to be vibrant and sustainable um, in the province. One of the things that I hear when I speak to members of your organization when, on the cross-border interviews is housing. Housing, housing, housing is a big concern for a lot of municipalities. This budget this, this budget table talks about the growing population of your communities and the, the even need to bring in more people uh, through an immigration fund. Uh, while housing is on top of mind, I'm assuming it's brought up during the advocacy days today or, and yesterday when we're recording this. Um, did this go far enough in addressing some of the shortfalls that municipalities are struggling with when it comes to housings? Because there was a significant portion of this budget dedicated to the housing file and working to build more affordable housing and a cross-section of different uh, styles of housing. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to say that the, the budget was all, you know, all dreary. There were some, there were some uh, additions in there. Um, and, but specifically around housing, they did invest some money in there. Um, $500 million over three years to uh, support um, RDC, uh, which is Regional Development Corporation. Um, and the, the uh, Housing uh, Working Capital Fund and the New Brunswick uh, Housing Hub. So all of those are key to kind of addressing some of the housing issues. Most of that is support. Um, and then there was also 68.9 million to the New Brunswick uh, Housing Corporation. So they did spend some money there. Now, what I would focus on though, from a, a municipal perspective is the infrastructure piece, right? It's, it's really great that they, they added some money in that housing file. It's, it's hugely important, as you say, it's recognized by municipalities, it's recognized by the province, by associations. But in order for municipalities themselves to be able to continue to build housing, we need support, um, we need revenue levers that, that support our infrastructure builds. Um, FCM did an average across the country about how much infrastructure dollars would be needed for each housing build. Now, I'm, you know, it could be in a one single unit, um, $107,000 in infrastructure on average across the country to support a, a new housing um, uh, development. And that's a lot of money. I mean, you know, you build 20 units, you take $107,000 on average, and you times that by 20. That's, it's a lot of money. So that, that infrastructure piece, those revenue levers are not there. So what's the path forward now for municipalities? This budget has been tabled. This is the last budget prior to the provincial election later on in October. Uh, you have been in meetings with cabinet ministers, I'm assuming, through advocacies. You've been meeting with the leaders of the other provincial parties as well in the province. Uh, what's the next steps for the organization leading up to this uh, uh provincial uh, election, because I can imagine while this is underwhelming in your words, it, the work doesn't stop today. It still continues. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, um, you know, the, the biggest piece is for us to continue to, to push to be collaborative uh, and working with the, the, the various orders of government, in this case, specifically with the provincial government. Um, we had a very good discussion uh, as, uh, as our membership uh, through these advocacy days, and a lot of that was around election readiness, and uh, and conversations about where we move forward with a fiscal uh, a fiscal framework. Um, those conversations won't continue, or sorry, will continue. They won't stop. Like we, even though the budget has been tabled to your to your point, um, we still need to uh, hold the province accountable for bringing forward some kind of a fiscal reform. It was covered in the municipal reform. It was in the white paper that it would be completed by January 1st, 2025. Um, it is, it's in the white paper, it's there, it's clear. And, and so, you know, here we are in March. And if by, you can make the argument by June, you're going to start to see election time uh, happening, in which case there's not going to be a lot of uh, opportunity for things to change. So, you know, the, the time is now for us as an association and partnering with uh, the Francophone Association in the province as well to hammer home the point that we need something in place. Because if we wait, then we're, we're like, we're already behind. So if we wait, then it just gets pushed another year. And I don't think a lot of municipalities are going to be able to um, make the, the choices that they, they need to make to kind of deliver services to their, uh, their constituents. Are you getting a sense that the parties are willing to work with municipalities on this file, or is there a sense that municipal issues aren't important to the provincial election, so we're just going to focus on the issues that are important that to the parties, whether it be healthcare, education, fiscal reform, or whoever is running against who, so we're going to slander whoever's in that the partisanship that often comes along with elections. Do you feel like you're being heard at the provincial level that these issues are going to be addressed during this upcoming election um i i would say that well I'll, I'll say two things we had the three parties here yesterday we we asked uh you know they had an opportunity to give an opening statement and then we asked the same questions of all three parties 
Um, a lot of it focusing around those issues of, um, you know, collaboration, infrastructure, housing, uh, fiscal levers, right, financial situation. Um, we were heard. You know, I, I think all three parties listened to what we had to say. Um, there were comments made by all three parties uh, about how they would sort of frame this leading into an election. Um, but focusing on the current government, we we continue to have conversations uh, with the premier, with the minister of local government and his department, with Service New Brunswick, for example. Um, we continue to have those conversations. Now, um, we really need to sit down with them and and hammer that point home about the urgency for this and what that might look like. And now we have the budget passed. Um, you know, I would sadly argue that we probably aren't going to get anything changed this year. If that's the case, then let's look at a stopgap solution to be able to support municipalities through uh, the rest of 2024, leading into 2025. If it if if it's if the fiscal summit piece, sorry, the fiscal reform piece is going to be pushed, then we need stopgap in there, something to be able to support municipalities. But. Um, the message was heard loud and clear from the membership that we that we really need to push hard on this. And this is our opportunity to do so. The minister in a press conference after the budget was tabled yesterday said that this budget was making hard choices and making but making good choices. Um, you as a municipal leader know that you have to make hard choices and difficult choices as well. Um, I'm going to ask a very political question right now, and I asked it to your uh, colleague who represents Alberta municipalities after his budget, uh, the Alberta budget was tabled. But are municipalities better off today than they were yesterday before this budget was tabled? Uh, I think it's because it's really a, a steady as she goes budget. I think we're pretty much in the same position. Um, Pre-budget, there was a realization that not, you know, not all municipalities are okay, right? Um, and and in many instances in our, with our membership uh, across the province, there are municipalities that have to make these hard decisions. What gives, right? If you only have so much operating capital, what what do you do? How do you deliver the services? What gets cut? And there's many instances of that. But because this budget is steady as she goes, that it it, it really we're in the exact same position as we are before the budget was passed. Um, what I will say though is now that we've had these advocacy days, we've we've talked about this. I think th there's an even greater sense of urgency that we're in the position that we're in, and we need to we need to do something moving forward. So. Kind of the same position, but with a greater sense of urgency. Uh, President, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. It's always great to sit down with you. Before I let you go, I have one last question. What would you sure. want the people of New Brunswick to know about this? Uh, what what municipalities are faced with right now? Because if you haven't already passed your budget, I'm assuming you're about to pass your budget because you usually wait for a provincial budget to set everything uh, in place. But for those municipalities who are looking at this budget and saying, okay, now we have to really make these tough choices because we thought we might get something, but we didn't. What would you want residents of New Brunswick to know about the state of municipalities that we haven't talked about yet with regards to this budget? Oh man, that's a big <laughs> question. Um, and it and it and it's a good one because some of the conversation we had over the advocacy days was a lack of understanding of the public of of municipal finances, municipal governance, and responsibilities. Right? What what is local responsibility? What is provincial? What's federal? And and a lot of that is fuzzy. Even for municipally elected officials, it's fuzzy. Um, what I would say is that you know municipalities have to have a balanced budget. We can't run deficits. We have to balance every year. Um, the provincial government can have deficits, right? If there's a very distinct difference between how those finances for municipal government and, and provincial government work. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're watching every dollar, we're pinching every penny, and there are lots of choices that are made um, at the municipal level where we need to make tough decisions. What, what do we not do? What do we do? Um, all of that is to try the best that we can to deliver services to the residents of each municipality in the province um, the, the best the best way we can um, and and try to make it 
the best communities that we that, that we can have strong and vibrant um and municipalities even though there's these huge property assessments um there there are a lot of responsibilities that municipalities have that i don't think the public really understand that we need to spend money on so i would urge uh residents to be more involved in in uh, civic engagement um, if you have questions, even if you think they're silly, ask them of your elected officials and staff. Go to council meetings. Um, read information that comes out through through uh, agendas and budget packages. Go to your to your budget uh, uh, planning sessions that your municipality may have. Sit and listen. Be involved in the conversations as much as you can. Get an understanding of really what it means because. At the end of the day, we're all responsible for the public purse, and we try to make the best choices we can. We mitigate risk as best we can, um, and uh, yeah, just get an understanding of what of what that really means. I uh, couldn't have said it better myself. You know, on my show, I, I often advocate for understanding the jurisdictional roles that the municipality plays compared to the other levels. So thank you so much for saying that. Um, Mayor Black, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for taking time out of your business schedule to do this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris. Again, appreciate it. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to the in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy, if you can. Consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.